Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on JC Wings Aerial Mexico Boeing Triple Seven 200 ER, the extended range version in their previous silver chrome livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. I pre-ordered and purchased this model from Choice Toys, whose store is based out of Olden Park, Kansas, here in the United States of America, and his website address is www.choicetoysinc.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular model, allow me to share with you some information about the history of Aerial Mexico and how they came about, if you would please. Aerial Mexico is a Latin American-based airline that was established as Aereo Naves de Mexico on September 15, 1934 by the late Antonio Diaz Lombardo and the airline's first plane was a Stinson SR Reliant 5A type aircraft that bared the registration ship number XB-AJI as the late Julio Censor actually piloted the first inaugural maiden flight which flew from Mexico City, Mexico to Acapulco, Mexico on September 14, 1934. Then fast forward to February 1972 when the airline changed its name from Aereo Naves de Mexico to what has become known today as Aereo Mexico. Then fast forward to October 1st, 1988. That's when Aereo Vs de Mexico S.A. de Seville Aereo TV was created using the trade name Aereo Mexico and the emblem of the Eagle Warrior. Aerial Mexico is the national flag carrier airline for the country of Mexico, whereas the headquarters of Aerial Mexico is located in the Colonia Cuauhtémoc section of Mexico City, Mexico, while the airline's main hub and base of operations is located on the grounds of Mexico City International Airport, which is located approximately 3.1 miles east of downtown Mexico City in the Mexico City borough of Van Nustiano Corazano. And the secondary hubs of Mexico, of Aerial Mexico, sorry about that, are located at Guadalajara International Airport, located in Guadalajara, Mexico, and Monterey International Airport, located in Monterey, Mexico. And the focus city hubs of Aerial Mexico are located at Cancun International Airport, located in Cancun, Mexico, and Tijuana International Airport, located in Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico. And Aerial Mexico also has a United States Administrative Office that's located in Houston, Texas. As of January 2019, or at the time of this video review posted, Aerial Mexico flies to 89 destinations in 25 countries throughout Mexico, North America, South America, Central America, the Caribbean, Europe, and Asia with an operating fleet of 71 aircraft with no unfulfilled orders pending on this aircraft type since this aircraft type is no longer operating in the Aerial Mexico fleet at the time of this video review posted. Also, as of January 2019, or at the time of this video review posted, Aerial Mexico currently operates as a certified three-star airline carrier according to the International Airline Review Firm, Skytrax Magazine, and the Boeing customer code for Aerial Mexico for this particular aircraft is Q8. Alright everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box here and see the top of it, you see the aircraft type, the Aerial Mexico logo, the Aerial Mexico uh, title, the Sky Team logo, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, then you see the Boeing official license product decal right there as well as the 1-200 scale diecast aircraft model information that sits at the front of the box. Now you're looking at the back of the aircraft where you see all the specification concerning the airline as well as the aircraft. You see the airline's logo, the Aerial Mexico um, title, the aircraft type, the specification information concerning that particular aircraft, the warning information, the JC Wings Facebook social media page information, the JC Wings logo, as well as the length and the width of the aircraft. You can pause and read that information if you like. In the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving, all right? Now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see is the aircraft type, the airline's logo, the Aerial Mexico title, the Sky Team logo, as well as the 1200 scale diecast aircraft model infinity that sits on top of the box. Now you're looking at the bottom of the box, the same information on top of the box I showed you earlier on. All right. Now you're looking at the nice little wooden model stand that actually came with the model. And then you have the customized plaque you see there. You see the airline's logo, the Aerial Mexico title, the aircraft type, as well as the scale model information displayed on this customized plaque. 
And then you're looking over here, right here, what you see there is the black pad on this model stand. And the purpose of this black pad, everyone, is to protect as well as prevent your model from being damaged or scratched when you put your model on this particular model stand. Now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the gear replacement doors for this particular model featuring the two little toothpicks inside this plastic bag here. Please stay tuned as I go into details for the purpose of these gear replacements for this particular model, alright? Okay, with all that information out of the way about the history of Aerial Mexico and how they came about, with all the details here on the front of the box, as well as the specification concerning that particular aircraft at the back of the box, as well as the wooden model stand that came with the model, as well as the plastic bag that features the gear replacement doors and the two little tip picks for this particular aircraft model. With no further ado, everyone, here is the model. Check it out. There it is, the JC Wings Aerial Mesco Born 777-200ER, the extended range version in their previous livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. All right, allow me to share some information how Aerial Mesco ended up with this aircraft and then they eventually decided to get rid of it, okay? I thought it was a pretty good aircraft. I saw this aircraft a couple times in Los Angeles when I visited Los Angeles on a couple occasions back in between 2002 and 2005. Aerial Mexico became the third Latin American based airline overall at the Varig and VASP Vical Aerea Sao Paulo SA that acquired their very first Boeing 777 200ER extended range jetliner aircraft that bared the registration ship number. N 745 AM, which happens in 745 AM on March 23rd, 2006, and took delivery of their very last Boeing 777 200 ER extended range jetliner aircraft that bears the registration ship number N 776 AM on September 5th, 2007, as Aerial Mexico previously registered and operated only four aircraft of this type in its fleet from 2006 up into its flew its last passenger revenue service flight on February 26, 2018 when it flew from British Aries, Argentina to Mexico City, Mexico as Aerial Mexico Flight AM-31 as this aircraft has since been withdrawn from the carrier's fleet and has been replaced with the next generation Boeing 787-8 and the next generation Boeing 787-9 stretch Dreamliner as of January 2019 or at the time of this video review posting. Now let's talk about delivery here. I kind of like this delivery on this aircraft, okay? This was the previous livery scheme of Aerial Mexico, which was actually called the Silver Chrome Livery Scheme that Aerial Mexico previously supported from 1998 up until 2007. As this livery scheme has since been replaced with the airline's current livery scheme, which was unveiled to the general public sometime in 2007, and has been the airline's official signature livery scheme look ever since 2007. So, with all that information out of the way about this history's aircraft, how it's a part of their fleet and it's no longer part of their fleet, as well as the livery scheme you see displayed on here, which is pretty impressive. With no further ado, everyone, let's get down to the nitty gritty and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft model. Sure, let's check it out. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port side where you see the nose gears, the nose gear struts, the nose gear door featuring the partial registration ship number slash fleet number 746. You see the Peter tubes in the static part, nice little blue and red cheat line there, the nose cone, the cockpit windows as well as the windshield wipers. But more important, you see the uh, Sky Team logo displayed there between the cockpit windows and the L1 boarding door. Aerial Mexico actually joined the Sky Team Alliance as one of the founding members along with Air France, Delta, and Korean Air on June 22, 2000, which consists of 20 airline members from five inhabited continents. And then you see the Aerial Mexico title right there, displayed there. And then you slide over this way. And you see the Mexican flag decal, which is displayed right there. And this particular flag decal represents the country where Aerial Mexico currently operates from as the national flag carrier airline for the country of Mexico. All right. All right, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft here on the lower part of the fuselage. And what you're looking at here is the landing bogey gears here on the side of this aircraft, featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. And then you slide over this way. You see the big massive engines here, the engine cones right there. And these are the General Electric GE90-94B type engines 
that were used on this particular aerial Mexico Boeing 777-200EO extended range jetliner aircraft. You also see the GE90 logo displayed there as well. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around which you see the front of the engines and the turbo fan blades do spin. Check it out. Now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port side of the aircraft where you see the engine strikes right there and the turbo fan blades spin as I mentioned earlier. And then you see the inboard land light right there. It got in a, per, in a little jewel right there that makes it more realistic and appealing. As well, you see in the uh, front visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the side of this aircraft, featuring the landing gear struts as well as landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard side, featuring the engine strikes over here and the turbo fan blade spin over here as well, as you can see. Okay, and then there's the inboard landing light right there on the starboard side, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears here on this side of the aircraft, featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now, I'm looking at the front of the aircraft, we got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the nose cone, the red and the blue cheat line right there, the nose gear door, as well as the taxi nose gear lights inside of the nose gear door, the nose gear struts, as well as the front nose gear doors. Now I'm looking at the edge of the wing here, and you see the red navigation light that sits on the edge of the wing. Okay, now you're seeing the top of this wing here from the bird's eye view, and the reason I got this position. Now, if you want to know between the difference between a 200ER um, extended range version and the 200LR version, it's simple. The 200LR version has the rake wingtips. The 200ER, you see here, does not. That's the difference right there. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side and above the windows and by the L4 door, you see the aerialmexico.com decal. And this is the actual airline's website address you see there, okay? And then below the windows and by the uh, rear door is the registration ship number, which is N746 AM. Registration ship number N746 AM. This aircraft is the second of four Boeing 777-200ER extended range jetliners that previously operated in the Aerial Mexico fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on April 21, 2006 and was delivered to Aerial Mexico one week later on April 28, 2006. Unfortunately, this aircraft was eventually withdrawn from the carrier's fleet on February 9, 2018 and was then ferried to an aircraft storage facility that's located on the grounds of Abu Dhabi International Airport in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates on February 17, 2018, where this aircraft remained stored up at until this aircraft was eventually acquired by Moscow-based Norwin Airlines on May 24, 2018. And as of January 2019, prior to the time of this video review posting, this particular aircraft still continues to operate in the Norwin Airlines fleet at the time of this video review posting. Now you're looking at the tail fin of the aircraft here, and what you see there at the top of it is the fleet number 746, as well as the airline's logo that's displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft, which is this right here. And this is the logo for Aerial Mexico, which is actually called an Aztec Eagle Warrior. And an Aztec Eagle Warrior were a special class of infantry soldiers whose people were certain ethnic groups of the Aztec society of Central Mexico who dominated large part of Mesoamerica from the 14th to the 16th centuries, okay? Now looking at the back of the aircraft here where you see the APU exhaust, auxiliary air powered unit exhaust hole right there. There's a hole there, there. And then right above the uh, APU exhaust hole, that is the strobe light right there, okay? Now you're looking at the Aerial Mexico Boeing 777-200ER extended range version jetliner aircraft from the rear view angle. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the nose cone, the nose gears, sorry about that, nose gears, the nose gear struts, the nose gear door featuring the uh, partial restraint ship number, fleet number 746, the Peter tubes, the nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the uh, Sky Team logo, the Aerial Mexico uh, billboard titles above the windows, and the uh, um, Mexican flag decal right there, as well as the nice little blue and red and blue cheat line that sits across this tire fuselage of this aircraft that you see there. Okay. Now 
Now looking at the inboard, the landing lights right there on the edge of the wing, as well as the front visual view, at the side visual view of the GE90, Jarrett Electric GE90 94B type engines you see there, featuring the engine cones there, as well as the side visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the side of this aircraft, featuring the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the edge of the wing where you see the green navigation light displayed on the edge of the wing you see there. Now you're looking at back the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the rear cargo container loading door right there, the AFT boat bin door, the registration ship number, the airline's website address, as well as the airline's logo that's painted on this blue tail fin of the aircraft featuring the fleet number displayed there as well. Okay, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage daily view of this aircraft model in full detail, allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears. It rolls pretty good. It's kind of rough there. The center bogey is the, pretty much the issue right there why I won't roll, but it rolls pretty good for the most part. The gears tilt, as well as the front nose gear swivels as well, you see there, there, and there, okay? So, with that said, allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model. Let's check it out. Alright, now you've seen this model being viewed from the aerial bird's eye view. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft here first. We see the nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. You see the anti-collision beacon light right there. Another antenna there. The ADF antennas in 3D. See the Wi-Fi box antenna right there, a couple more antennas, and then there's the vertical stabilizer slash, better known as the tail, as well as the horizontal stabilizer featuring two little dots right there, as well as over here. Those two little dots you see on the edge of the horizontal stabilizer are called illuminator lights, and the purpose of these illuminator lights is to light up this tail here when it flew at nighttime. Now let's check out the wings. No wing walkway, but you got the engines right there as well as the flaps, slats, aileron spoilers, what have you. The registration ship number, the fuel dump valve, as well as the edge of the wing. Now let's check out this side over here. No wing walkway on the side either, but you got the engines there, as well as the flaps, slats, aileron spoilers, what have you. And then the fuel dump valve, as well as the edge of the wing on this side of the aircraft as well. Now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model, it's mostly blue and silver. Now we're going to start at the front here, the nose cone, that little deal right there, I have no idea what that is, but you see the closed nose gear door, as well as the open front nose gear door, as well as the front nose gear. And then you slide up this way, the end collision beacon light, the hole where the stand goes in at. Couple more antennas there. The pressure relief valve there. And then the APU housing doors right there. And the uh, horizontal stabilizers underneath. And then you check the gears here. They tilt pretty good. And the underneath uh, visual view of these engines here in full detail. As well as the flaps, slats, aileron supports, what have you. The restaurant ship number, the fuel dump valve, and the edge of the wing on this side. And let's check over here. The gears right here, tilt pretty cool. The engine's there, detail, awesome. As well as the flaps, slats, aileron spoilers over here. The fuel dump valve as well as the edge of the wing on this side of the aircraft as well. Alright, since I showed you the area of bird's eye view of this aircraft model here, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that nice little wooden model stand that actually came with the model I showed you earlier. With no further ado everyone, here is the model on the stand. Check it out. Alright, fine got this model on the stand with no problem, no hesitation, as you see it being displayed on the stand, being viewed from the port side. Now you're seeing this model being displayed on the stand in a takeoff landing position being viewed from the front view angle. 
Now you see this model being displayed on the model stand, being viewed from the takeoff landing position, being viewed from the starboard side. And finally, you're seeing this model being displayed on the model stand, being viewed from the tail cam angle. Okay, before I take this model to stand, I got in this position for a reason, and the reason is, is the detachable magnetic gear that's on this particular model. I'm gonna go ahead and take them all starting with the front and those gears you see here, right here, the magnetic there, the gears here on the port side there, as well as the bogey gears here on the starboard side all right so with all the gears off this model i'm gonna let you see this model at a different angle without the gears let's check it out now you're seeing this model being displayed without the gears while you're seeing it being displayed on the model stand being viewed in in the flight mode position now you got one or two options how you want to display your model from this point on if you want to continue to display it like that in the gears up position without the gears in flight mode position that's fine Remember this gear, this plastic bag here I showed you earlier with the gear replacement doors? That's the purpose of these gear replacement doors, is to substitute your gears while you display your model like this while it's being displayed in flight mode position. Or you can keep it in a gear down position with the gears on there. Either way is your choice. I choose to leave mine on there because it adds more value to the model. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and take, put these gears back on this model, take this model to stand, and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right? All right, let's talk about the seating configuration. The Aerial Massacre Boeing 777-200ER Extended Range Jetliner Aircraft seated 275 seats in a two-class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown, everyone, from rows one to seven, which will be from here all the way back to right there. You have 49 business class seats in rows eight to 35, which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You had an additional 226 economy class seats, which brings the total to 275 seats. And finally, from 2006 up until 2018, Aerial Mexico previously utilized this aircraft, the Boeing 777-200ER Extended Range Jetliner Aircraft, on routes from Mexico City to worldwide destinations such as Buenos Aires, Argentina, Madrid, Spain, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Amsterdam, Tijuana, Mexico, Shanghai, Pudon via Tijuana, Mexico, Tokyo, Narita, Paris Orly, Paris Charles de Gaulle, Dusseldorf, Germany, New York JFK, and Los Angeles, California. Where well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I, I want to know if you plan on getting this model or do you have it in your collection now? And your only outside chance of getting it if you haven't gotten it yet is probably on eBay. But other than that, if you can't get on there, you're pretty much out of luck at this point. So with that said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.